Get Certified Together program is created by Technocofe, your free online knowledge sharing website based out in London. which I'm getting help me in improving my delivery further and I'm open for more suggestions with open ears to make me perform better. All right, without further ado, let us dive into today's topic which covers last few subtopics of the domain one, cloud concepts, architecture and design. Also, the way I am speaking, you might have guessed by now that I'm reading from a transcript because like I told you last time that the topic which I am covering today, I don't have much knowledge about that. Hey everyone, welcome again in another episode of the Get Certified Together series. This is episode number 25 for the program and episode number 10 for specifically the CCSP series. As you can anticipate from the number of the episode, we are having the 25th episode today, which is not quite a big number, but still something to be proud of. I'm not sure 25th will be Silver Jubilee or I'm really bad at that. But anyways, so what we did in these past 25 episodes, we covered CompTIA Security Plus syllabus. And in the 10th episode for the CCSP series, we will be covering the last topic of the domain one. I shared with you before as well why I started this podcast because when I was learning about information security myself, I was able to get a lot of information online, but only few podcasts on the topic. So I thought maybe I'm not sure what others, but me myself find this learning while listening quite fascinating as well as time saving. So I should be having a go and recording something about information security myself. So we can have a walk or go for a run or do daily household course all the while while gaining new knowledge. I'm sure you guys must have liked the content which I am presenting and trust me, I'm putting in a lot of efforts in improving the quality of the content and the delivery. If you have observed voice quality is getting better, content is more explanatory. And of course, I'm working on improving my speaking skills as well to make my words more clearer. All these reviews and feedbacks which I'm getting help me in improving my delivery further and I'm open for more suggestions with open ears to make me perform better. All right, without further ado, let us dive into today's topic which covers last few subtopics of the domain one, cloud concepts, architecture and design. Also, the way I am speaking, you might have guessed by now that I am reading from a transcript because like I told you last time that the topic which I am covering today, I don't have much knowledge about that. So I cannot speak with with my own knowledge and with my own, uh, say, on the go, on prompt. I need something to be written first. So instead of writing only about the topic, I write the whole transcript for the episode. I'm just reading through. Maybe you will find it more like a speech, but it is the way it is. Something new, a different experience. Let us have a quick break before we begin our quick recap session and start on today's topic. All right, welcome back. So today's episode will be a bit shorter than what what we normally have in past few weeks. The reason for it specifically is the content which I am covering today is shorter and it's quite limited. We are only covering two subtopics which are remaining for domain one. I don't want to start domain two right away in the same episode itself because it will give, because I want to start that from next episode, domain two, a fresh episode and a fresh topic. It will also, of course, give us a good opportunity to revise all the subtopics again for domain one before we move to domain two. So we have another one week to cover uh, subtopics of domain one again. So you can revisit the past episodes, past topics, and just have a good idea about cloud concepts, architecture, and design. As you recall in the weighted section, when we discussed about CCS exam and the format and what are the different topics covered in the syllabus i told you about the weightage of this particular domain one so cloud concepts architecture and design actually covers 17 percent which is almost equal to domain three domain four and domain five but again because all those topics and all the domains cover almost equal weightage so we cannot skip anything we have to learn about each topic each subtopic in a proper manner only then we can actually finish the exam with success 
So let us have a quick recap of the subtopics again. We did cover understanding of cloud computing concept, which covers cloud computing definition, different roles, cloud computing characteristics, and building blocks. We covered cloud reference architecture as well, where we discussed about different service models, deployment models. Also, we covered about understanding security concepts relevant to the cloud computing. Remember cryptography, access control, data media sanitization, network and virtualization security. And in the last subtopic, we were covering understanding design principles of the secured cloud computing. So we covered about secure data life cycle, we covered about disaster recovery and BCP cost benefit analysis. Wait, that was not last topic. So evaluation of cloud service provider, which we are covering today will be the last subtopic for this domain one. So today we will be covering verification against criteria about different different type of certifications, different type of compliance, which we or any organization should be following when we discuss about information security or cloud security. And we will be also covering a bit about product certification. Okay, so let us move on the topic for this week's episode, the evaluation of cloud service provider. Now by far we are quite aware of which stakeholders is called a cloud service provider. Cloud service provider is any organization or any company which provide their resources which they are hosting for the end user to host their application. So if I am a cloud service provider, I'll be managing an infrastructure, I'll be putting on hardware, putting on all the backend backbone networking, backbone cabling and everything. And on the internet, I'll be giving access of this infrastructure to the end user so that they can deploy their virtual application, they, are, they can deploy their virtual machines, containers on top of that infrastructure. I'll be following multi-tenancy models, so different users, different customers, they can all share the resources on my infrastructure. For that, I'll be using virtualization. Now, when we talk about term evaluation, it is quite broad and we use it specifically whenever we want to examine anything compared to a set criteria. For example, we get evaluation in our job, we are evaluated in college and so on. Unfortunately, we can only succeed to the next stage or get promoted only if our evaluation is successful. Similarly, of course, whenever any organization is taking a big decision to move from traditional to cloud-based deployment, they first need to ensure that the solution they are choosing is well evaluated against certain set of standards. So they cannot simply go on and put their critical data or put their critical application on, on top of just random cloud service provider. Any organization, any end cloud user will be looking from the perspective of if they are trusting someone with their application, with their data, whether that particular cloud service provider is worth to be trusted. Does the solution which they are providing is well evaluated against the set standards from different organizations? And from a cloud service provider's point of view, I can only be able to sell my solutions to the customer if I give them this confirmation that the solution they are buying is indeed evaluated and certified with the recommended standards. Now, some of the key certifications which can help these evaluations are ISO 27001, ISO 27002, ISO 27017, SOC reports, and PCI DSS, and so on. But these are some of the most common and most widely used, widely heard as well. If you recall, we have covered some of them in CompTIA syllabus as well. and. And if I remember correctly, we have covered it extensively. So I suggest you can go and check that episode again as well. It will give us a good idea about, about the kind of thing which we, which we are covering in this episode. Let us start with ISO first. ISO or International Organization of Standardization builds a set of guidelines which any organization must follow irrespective of if they are using a cloud-based solution or traditional deployment. So this particular standardization was in use even before cloud-based solution was common or even before cloud become a day-to-day -day term or, or organization more regularly started using cloud-based deployment. Even before that, ISO was there. So ISO 27001 certifies the organization and ISO 27002 provides the framework. ISO 27001 covers a lot of topic from the information security. A few of them you might have heard in our episode of the CompTIA Security Plus series again. But let me revisit those domains again. So as part of ISO 27001, we'll be having InfoSec policies, asset management, access control, cryptography, operational security, communication security, InfoSec incident management, InfoSec business continuity management, compliance. We have heard about these all these terms again and again in whole information security or even just now when we were talking about security concepts relevant to cloud computing as well. So again, you can understand that 
whatever we are covering as part of information security or cloud security, actually they all are referred from this particular set of standardization provided by ISO 27001. And that's why it is very important that any organization or any cloud service provider have to go through with this particular set of standards before they can start selling their solution. And like I said before, ISO 27002 provides the framework of implementing security guidelines mentioned in ISO 27001. Similarly, in ISO 27017, it is mostly more relevant towards the cloud-based deployment. Again, based on the topics or based on the domains included in 27001. So in a way, it is having information closer to the cloud-based deployment. While ISO provide guidelines, SOC reports help in validating whether CSP has taken in consideration the relevant guidelines and incorporated the framework for the standards. Full form of SOC is Service Organization Control and it provides two types of reports, SOC 1 and SOC 2. SOC 1 itself has three further subcategories. Let us start with SOC 1 as a whole first. So SOC 1 covers relevant financial information about the CSPs, which may be vital for the auditors. SOC 1, like I said, itself is subdivided into two different reports. Type 1, which have mostly auditors' opinion on financial information. Type 2 is having similar information, but for a specific period of time. SOC 2 covers more technical aspects of CSPs with information related to security, confidentiality, availability, privacy, etc. all covered in the report. SOC 3 covers the same info as SOC 2 but in more summarized way instead of going into the details. So uh, I recall this again in CompTIA Security Plus we have covered different type of SOC reports. So SOC 2 is having more detailed information and it's not widely available for anyone to just have a have a read through it. But SOC 3 is more commonly available. It is open for anyone to read because it don't have the actual technical or confidential information regarding any CSP but it have more generic information in a summarized way. So if I summarize it again, SOC 1 is intended for those who are interested in financial statements. SOC 2 is for information technology personnel will be who will be interested. And SOC 3 just illustrate whether all the compliance and all the security efforts which are put in building any cloud-based deployment is being taken care of, is being considered by any organization or any CSP. Another key security standard for any organization which keeps data related to banking industry is PCI DSS. By banking industry, I mean all sort of information which like transaction, account details, cardholder data, etc. Some of the regulation covered as part of PCI DSS standards are your data should be behind a firewall, it should be encrypted when data is at rest and in transit, it should be always monitored and tracked and we always have to use secure application for all the transactions and processing. So PCI DSS is mostly relevant for any industry or any cloud user which deals with banking or financial information and if they want to keep that data on their on their own premise or they want to keep on the cloud, they have to make sure that this particular compliance or this particular set of uh, framework is always followed and is certified by the auditors. When we talk about certification, there comes another term which is product certification. So like evaluation, certification of the product ensure that claims made by organization which build that product are authentic. If I am building a solution or if I am selling an application, that application should be certified to be used for any public user. Otherwise, I am sort of selling a faulty product. It's just like any product which anyone, anything you can buy online or anything you can buy on the store as well. Only if they are certified to be used, then only you're gonna buy that product, otherwise you will not buy that. Same goes for the application in software as well. The software or product which you are using from any application provider must be certified against a certain set of standards and guidelines. Two guidelines which are widely recognized for ensuring these certifications are CC or Common Criteria and FIPS, Federal Information Processing Standard. Both provide well-architected and comprehensive framework covering various aspects related to IT and cloud security. The goal of common criteria certification makes sure that the product any customer is buying have been evaluated and is fulfilling all the claims made by the product owner. So if I have created a product, I am claiming that it will be, uh, it will be having an availability of uh, say 99.99%, then someone have to check whether that claim is really there, whether that claim is really something which I can fulfill as a product provider or as an application provider. And when only that criteria is fulfilled, 
then I can get like certification that this particular product is 99.99% available. And that's something which is provided by common criteria. Tips is more towards maintaining the confidentiality and integrity of the information and data which you are storing on the cloud. So uh, whether that data is encrypted with the with the latest algorithm, whether you are using proper crypt cryptography, the kind of physical security you are having or who and who have access to that data or how you are using the authentication mechanism, everything is covered and everything is evaluated and certified by the FIPS. And like the name said, FIPS start with federal. So you can understand that outside of United States, FIPS is not typically used or it's not a driver or it's not a mandatory requirement, but other governments and enterprises tend to recognize FIPS as well. So it's not that uh, this is something if you are not in United States, then you should not be taking care of. It's always something to learn and something to know about if you are if you are building your application or if you are using an application which is deployed on cloud service providers. OK, that's all for this week's episode. I hope we get something new to learn this week. Let us revise the concepts again before the upcoming episode so we can have a better understanding of today's topic. We have covered all the topics of the way in one now. In my next episode, I will restart the CCSP's journey starting with revising what we did till now and the next domain of the syllabus, cloud data security. I know it was a bit shorter than what we had till now for other topics, but like I said, even the topics which we were supposed to cover today are smaller, they are shorter, there were only two subtopics and I also tried to get more information on different questions which might come from this particular topics and I cannot find much information on that so I, I feel that maybe they are not that common commonly asked in the exam but as part of syllabus we have to cover them but that's why I was not putting more efforts in covering these topics. So if you want to learn more about it, of course, you can check online on FIPS, CC and uh, different type of reports, SOC reports, ISO standards. But moving on from next week onwards, we will be understanding more towards how we can secure data and how cloud data security really works in a cloud based deployment model. All right. Goodbye and good luck. Thank you for listening to get certified together. If you loved our content, then please like and subscribe from your favorite podcast platform so you don't miss the notification for our next episodes and announcements.